Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk promises that the autonomous Los Angeles to New York City run will happen later this year, specs are leaked for the successor to the RIMAC Concept 1, and the Ontario Provincial Police gets a very special Tesla Model X cruiser. These stories and more, coming next. Hi, I'm Nikki, your host, and while this week may not have been as interplanetary as last week's show, we've got lots of news in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter vehicles to play catch up with. So let's get on with our first story. For the last year or so, we've been on something of a death watch for Faraday Future, the California-based but Chinese-backed automotive startup wanting to be the next Tesla. With massive debts and all kinds of deadlines blown past, not to mention scuppered plans for a $1 billion production facility north of Las Vegas, Faraday Future has been bleeding staff and money for a really long time. This week, Faraday Future said it had secured $1.5 billion in investment from Hong Kong. Moreover, at an event this week, Faraday Future showcased the production concept for its second electric vehicle, the FF81, designed for the Chinese market. This car will debut at this year's Beijing Auto Show, but it's anyone's guess right now as if it will actually enter production or not. Talking of China, the Chinese Ministry of Finance announced a new set of EV subsidy regulations this week, designed to reward those who buy longer-range electric cars. EVs with over 400 kilometers, that's 249 miles of range, will get a 13% increase in subsidies, equivalent to just under $8,000 per car. The idea? To encourage Chinese automakers to focus on truly long-range vehicles rather than the super-low-cost, low-range vehicles that many have focused on thus far. This not only means that the Chinese market will see more highway-capable long-range EVs in the future, but it should have an impact on the market outside of China, as many new EV startups like Byton, NIO, BYD and Faraday Future have expressed a keen interest in China being a key market for them. It's been several years since Tesla first unveiled its autopilot semi-autonomous driving technology, and in that time we've seen autopilot grow in complexity and capability. At the heart of this, of course, has been Tesla's desire to make its vehicles fully autonomous in the not-too-distant future. One way of proving that its technology is ready for prime time has been the promise of a coast-to-coast -coast autonomous vehicle drive, something Tesla CEO Elon Musk initially promised would happen last year. But with 2017 now behind us and no autonomous drivers yet happening, some have been questioning what was going to happen. But in last week's earnings call for Q4 2017, Musk promised the drive would most certainly happen this year, with the event likely to happen sometime in the next three to six months. As always, when Tesla firms up a date, I'll let you know. We've known for the past few months that BMW has been planning an incremental upgrade to its flagship i8 plug-in hybrid sports car. And this week we learned of the pricing for the same, with the i8 coupe starting at $148,495. With leather and heated seats as standard, as well as 20-inch alloys and heads-up display, the BMW i8 is more expensive than a high-end Tesla Model S, but if I'm honest, the two cars are most certainly aimed at different buyers. New for 2019, other than the expanded 11.7 kilowatt hour battery pack and nine more horsepower, is the BMW i8 Roadster. It adds a soft top option if you're willing to spend an additional $15,800 over the entry level coupe price. Back at the tail end of last US presidency, the federal government cemented new 2021 corporate average fuel economy targets for light passenger vehicles, setting in place targets that would require automakers to achieve an average fuel economy across their fleet of 46.6 US miles per gallon, or about 5 litres per 100 kilometres. This week, however, we heard that the new administration is readying itself to rewrite those CAFE targets with a 23.3% less stringent one, equivalent to 35.7 miles per US gallon, which is 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres. And the argument being used, at least according to Bloomberg, is that if heavier vehicles with less efficient engines are used more on the road, they will reduce road fatality numbers. I know you all don't like it when I add my own personal political views in the show, so I'm going to let you duke it all out in the comments section below. 
The Chevrolet Bolt EV might be selling really well in the US right now, but as any European EV fan will tell you, both supply and sales of the Ampera E, the European twin to the Bolt EV, haven't been all that great. The reason is primarily down to the sale of Opel and Vauxhall by GM to the PSA group last year, a messy divorce which left the Ampera E a GM-designed vehicle, a little confused about whose house it needed to live at and whose house it got to stay at at the weekends. Well, it turns out that PSA isn't happy about the Bolt Ampera E deal, and as such, has just decided to give up on selling the Ampera E, instead focusing on developing its own electric version of the Opel Corsa, a car that will be launched in 2019 alongside three other electrified models under the Opel Vauxhall brand. There are no details yet on what we can expect, but if it's going to be competitive, it will need to have at least 200 miles, that's 320 kilometers of range per charge. Opel may be struggling a little with its US-made EV, but rival automaker Renault is doing so well with its electric vehicle rollout that it's just opened its first electric vehicle experience center at a shopping center in Stockholm, Sweden. Sadly, there's no official B-roll of the store opening, but following Tesla's highly successful Milestorm model, Renault hopes the first of its electric vehicle experience centers will allow it to connect with new and existing customers in a new way, teaching them about electric vehicle mobility and engaging on them on a level that you just wouldn't be able to find at a regular car dealership. Plus, because it's in a mall, Renault expects far more foot traffic and casual passers-by than you'd get at a regular car dealership, which is a place people only really visit when they've already made their mind up they want to buy a new car, and sometimes what sort of car they want to buy. Last year, we did a special video on this channel covering five autonomous electric drones you should look out for in the near future, and some of you pointed out quite rightly at the time that many of these vehicles were still in their early phase of development. Well, earlier this month, Chinese drone maker Ehang released footage of its first manned test flights of the Ehang 184. With more than 1,000 test flights now completed, the company says the drone can handle everything from heat to fog and even a Category 7 typhoon. Fully autonomous, the Ehang 184 can travel around 10 miles with a single passenger on board with no input required from them at all. The future is most certainly here. Earlier this year, I told you that Croatian firm Rimac was busy developing the successor to the Concept One all-electric supercar. And back then, I shared with you a teaser of what this new vehicle would look like. Some people are calling it the Concept Two. At the time, we had no specifications to go on, but this week, Autocar leaked what it says are specifications for the new Rimac hypercar. Alongside a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack and full level four autonomous driving capabilities, Rimac is also said to be targeting the next generation Tesla Roadster in terms of performance, with the Concept 2, remember that's only a working name, not the car's actual name, expected to be even more high performance than the Rimac 1. We'll see for the first time at the Geneva Motor Show if that's true, so there's only a few more weeks left before we know the specs, to be sure. When it comes to high performance sports cars, Porsche is most certainly at the top of the list, but only when it comes to internal combustion engine to vehicles. Yet with its Mission E due to launch in the not too distant future, Porsche is said to be ramping up its advertising efforts to show its loyal petrol head fans that electric vehicles are actually okay. It's been doing that by publishing interviews with executives involved with the Mission E program, extolling the virtues of all-electric drivetrains, zero emissions, and of course, instant torque. It's nothing new if you're already an EV head, but it just goes to show that Porsche is really working hard to make sure its customers stay loyal through its switch to all-electric propulsion. This week, Tesla confirmed it's now made its 300,000th electric car, which is great news for Tesla fans and plug-in vehicle fans alike. Yet, as I said in last week's show, Tesla is also pushing back of production of the entry-level Model 3 with a standard battery pack, instead focusing on the longer-range, more premium Model 3. That means many Tesla Model 3 reservation holders will have to end up waiting longer for their car than they'd originally hoped, a situation which, of course, isn't ideal. Yet this week we heard the news that Tesla is now reaching out to Model S and Model X customers, asking them if they'd like to order a Model 3. 
Indeed, some owners, who only decided recently to put a deposit down on the Model 3, are already being asked by Tesla if they'd like to configure their car, with delivery dates promised for as little as one month from today. While it's great to see Tesla working hard to keep its existing fan base happy, it does seem rather unfair to all of those who've waited nearly two years to get their car. At least, that's how I'd feel if I was a reservation holder. With more and more automakers looking to electric drivetrains for the future of their brand, there's an ever-increasing demand for the materials that make up the car's battery packs. BMW is one such company, and this week we learned that BMW is in fact looking to secure a 10-year supply of lithium and cobalt, two metals used in lithium-ion battery packs. Commenting that it wanted to sign long-term contracts that go down to the level of the mine, the company is clearly eager to avoid some of the supply chain challenges we're already starting to see with certain EVs out there. On top of trying to secure itself a supply of lithium-ion battery materials, BMW is hard at work developing a solid-state battery which it says it is confident it can win the solid-state race with. In an interview with Auto Car magazine, BMW's soon-to-depart head of marketing Ian Robertson said that BMW has already got solid-state batteries in the lab, but it's finding it difficult to bring them into production. Let's hope BMW solves that issue soon. When a new car launches, it's common for the automaker in question to try and devise some unique and interesting way of celebrating the car's characteristics, style or target market. But perhaps none compares with the crazy publicity stunt that Land Rover Jaguar just carried out to publicize the launch of its Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid. That's because the firm has just sent a Range Rover Sport P400e up the 999 steps from the Tianmen Mountain Road, also known as the Dragon Road in China, to the top of the Heaven's Gate staircase. It's the first time a car has ever made the journey, and if I'm honest, I have no idea how permission was given for the stunt. But hey, I guess it happened. I put a link in the description below so you can watch the video, as it's worth a watch just for its craziness. And finally, over the past few years, we've seen more and more police forces around the world entertain the possibility of using electric vehicles in their fleets, from all electric motorcycles through to patrol cars in busy cities, and yes, even a few Tesla Model S cars. But this week, the Ontario Provincial Police's Highway Safety Division unveiled their new pride and joy, a fully kitted out Tesla Model X that I'm guessing most criminals will find extremely tough to outrun. True, it wasn't exactly cheap, but the fuel savings alone should give the OPP an overall cost savings in the long run. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the show on YouTube. Consider supporting us through Patreon, or if you're so inclined, send us your bitcoins at the address in the description below. Have a great weekend, thanks for watching, and as always, keep evolving!